in a long time, and I followed your career as um, you were superintendent of District A, and they were doing marvelous things in, in um, community board A. And um, Betty also received uh, your PhD from, in, in education from Harvard University. Yes. And um, we wish you so much joy and luck, and, and we know you're going to do a great job as a regent for the um, state of New York. And um, I want to read a quote. Okay, that you said when you were interviewed by our local paper, you said, I am determined to resume my efforts for the children of the Bronx. I am distressed with the sinking prospects for our children that we witnessed in recent years, such as the decline in admissions to specialized high schools. These are all things that we have discussed. Um, and when the achievements of schools in our most privileged neighborhoods such as Riverdale and Drog Neck decline. That is a clear warning that a new direction is, is needed. And this just struck home with me. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest speaker. And um, one of the questions you have to answer first is, because I've heard from a lot of people, what does the Board of Regents do? Here is Dr. Betty A. Wilson. Okay. Um, actually, if I can... Um, just tell you very quickly a little bit about who I am, and, although most of you may already know. Um, but there are just a, a couple of important issues, and what I've been doing, obviously, I resigned in 2003, so I'd like to share a little bit of that. Um, first of all, I'm a person who came to this country when I was 10 years old and didn't speak a word of English from Puerto Rico. And um, I went. Uh, I was actually a product of District 10, PS32, Junior High School 45, and um, really feel that in many ways my work in district, and so I'm going to jump to, most of you know, I was a principal in Citywide with severely emotionally disturbed children, a middle school residential program in Rockland. And um, my last position as principal was 218, which was in a phenomenal school in Inwood, um, Washington Heights. Um, became superintendent district eight. And I think the, the, the most striking piece for me in looking at Riverdale was that I was very familiar with some of your schools, obviously. Um, very clearly knew that you had some really talented people, and um, 141 as a middle school, you had uh, PS24. So I knew that there was some competition coming into District <coughs> 8, and I wanted to look and obviously look at your schools and figure out what attributed to the success, and how do you how do you maintain that and build capacity and further the growth. And for me, the, the, obviously the challenge became establishing um, 101. And for those of you who know the school, within a short period of time, the school was in the top five schools in, in the entire city. Um, sad to say that uh, I learned about a year ago that the school was being restructured and not what we had intended the school to be. The other issue for me is that, um, and now I'm going to get to the Regents piece, is that okay. um, in January of 2003, um, I became aware of the restructuring because I was very active at Harvard with um, having uh, received my master's and doctorate. I was very active with the Harvard. I was also served on the alumni of some of the issues that were being discussed in New York City and some of the plans. And at that time, I did not agree with many of the plans. So, and I did not see myself as being a participant and being part of the, the new structure. So I took a position that some of you may have read about and um, decided that I was going to resign. I, I couldn't retire. I didn't have the age to retire. And um, I did have, interestingly enough, I had 30 years in the system. 
but I didn't have the age because I started quite young. And so I resigned, um, left, and from 2003, um, I've done some work in the Miami school, in high schools primarily, and in Los Angeles, working with K through eight. And I have been blessed um, to have continued my work with schools, being inside of schools. So I, I, have, I did not go into a, uh, a situation uh, that kept me away from, from looking at instruction, uh, doing work with principals, being, I spent a lot of time in classrooms serving. So that's been my work. Uh, the region issue came up <coughs> last year and uh, unfortunately, <coughs> by one vote, I was not able to sit and serve. Um, but this year there was another opportunity when Jeffrey Dinowitz actually reached out and a couple of other people and said, we, we have the sense that your work is not finished and maybe this is an opportunity. And I, first I said no. Um, I also had other people, have, pretty much, um, they gave me their version of why they thought this was a good thing. and so. After discussing it with my family, I decided that this was a good opportunity to, to continue the work. So what does the region do? I served in my first meeting uh, last week, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, two weeks ago. And what was interesting was, uh, like most students, you, you sort of dig through, and I wanted to know who serves on the region, who are the people who serve on the region, and what what are some of the responsibilities? And so I started to look at not only the overall mission of the region, but the subcommittees, because there's a lot of work that gets done in subcommittee. And so um, I went to every subcommittee meeting to see where I would best fit in terms of the subcommittee work. Um, in the, the first day in the morning, I was relatively quiet. I was listening and trying to sort of get, um, feel my way. And by the afternoon, I became quite vocal because the issue of assessment, I felt, was an issue that's very dear and passionate to me. I, I couldn't understand, and I still don't understand, why our children take the exam in January. And so I asked the commissioner who was there and the assessment people, why is it that we, we teach, we start school, we race through half a year, and they take a, a, an exam, and then who gets held accountable? The teacher from last year, because it's six months, the teacher from this year, who's only had the children for five or six months. Why are we still, when I know for a fact that there are other, there are other states and there are other um, parts of the country that will give the exam later on?